All right, so in this video, I want to talk a little bit more about the structural details of collagen. Okay, so let's bring up some notes here that we can fill in. Okay, so collagen is a triple-stranded helix. Okay, and that triple-stranded helix is specifically called tropocollagen. Okay, and that tropocollagen looks something like this. Okay, so uh, each of those different colored strands, this little yellow one, this purple one, and this sort of greenish one, they're all wrapped around each other and they end up making some sort of rope. Okay, so that's what that's tropocollagen right there. Now, uh, so that's three polypeptides that are wound very tightly around each other uh, in a rope like fashion. Okay, and each of those each polypeptide is an alpha chain. Okay. Um, now, each of those alpha chains consists at least mostly of these little uh, triplet repeats of amino acids. Okay, so they are basically it's glycine and then x and then y okay where x and y represent other amino acids now x is typically or for the most part a proline okay um, and that allows tight kinks to form uh, it's specifically so so this x right here would typically be proline and um, it, it's helpful that it's right next to glycine because glycine is a really really tight uh, excuse me, really, really small amino acid. It's the smallest amino acid because its side chain is simply a hydrogen. So having a proline right next to it, and if you're familiar with protein structure, you know that proline um, having that that side chain that comes back and uh, is bound to its alpha nitrogen, its alpha amino nitrogen, I should say, um, form uh, forms little bends in polypeptide chains. And so here, when it's right next, when that proline is right next to glycine, uh, it allows tight kinks to form. Um, because because glycine doesn't sterically hinder it, okay, um, so that's pretty important. It allows the the triple stranded helix to wind really really tightly around each other, okay. Those three polypeptides, and the Y is uh, typically uh, hydroxyproline or hydroxylysine, okay. Hydroxyproline or hydroxylysine. So um, what are hydroxyproline and hydroxylysine? They're just proline and lysine residues that have hydroxyl groups attached to them, okay? And um, the, the hydroxylation of those proline and lysine residues occurs in the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And uh, that hydroxylation process requires uh, ascorbic acid or ascorbate, um, which is also called uh, vitamin C, okay? Vitamin C, I'll just abbreviate that here as vite C as a cofactor. And... Um, uh, a deficiency in that vitamin C um, actually causes a disease called scurvy, and I'll talk a little bit more about that definitely later in the in the series, and I'll mention it here uh, a little bit. But what does the hydroxylation of those residues look like? Looks like this. Okay, so here we have a proline residue or a proleal residue, part of a polypeptide chain. So proleal hydroxylase with using vitamin C as a cofactor will go through and attach a hydroxy uh, a hydroxyl group. To, to the proline creating hydroxy, the hydroxyproline or hydroxyproline residue. Okay, and the same sort of thing can happen for lysine. So here we have a side chain of, of lysine. Lysyl hydroxylase will act on it, add the hydroxyl group there. Okay, so we create uh, the hydroxylysyl or hydroxylysine residue. Okay, now that's important because these, these OH groups, they, they exist on this polypeptide strand. Okay, so here, um, I didn't go through and draw this, but here there's that, you know, that triplet repeat, there's glycine and then an X and a Y, and then there's a glycine and then an X and a Y. And you can imagine that occurs throughout this whole chain here and then this whole chain back there and this one here. And those residues, um, it, when they're, uh, when they have, um, hydroxylated side chains, OH groups will be kind of here and here. There'll be OH groups all over this thing. And those OH groups can hydrogen bond with other OH groups that are on the other uh, polypeptides. And so that is really important in um, maintaining, maintaining the structural integrity of collagen, okay? That's called cross-linking, and that's one type of cross-linking um, in, in collagen. And that, like I said, it holds the chains together. And so when, um, when patients have vitamin C deficiency, again, I'll talk more about it later, but that compromises the structural integrity of, of collagen, and the connective tissue in those individuals, um, and that 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 is scurvy. Okay, again, more on that later. Okay, so um, 
when it comes to um, collagen, it's not just um, this this triple helix. Okay, there's there's uh, it's not just those fibers connected to each other and being held together like that. It's more there's more to it than that. There are these little um, these this triple helix ends up being represented sometimes by this little bar shown here. And what ends up happening is that tropocollagen will end up kind of arranging itself with a bunch of other tropocollagens, and then they'll be held together to form um, mature collagen, which actually looks like this. Okay, um, and so that forms. I'm gonna bring up some stuff here. Okay, that forms mature collagen, and mature collagen 